Hey guys, Bren Campbell again. This is my third video featuring buddy Ilias Akbar, his E39M5, and our chats while driving his E39 and my E60M5 back to back. Comparing notes, here we cover Ilias's E39 M5 ownership experience, a discussion of how the M5s have gotten better with more power, and arguably worse because they seem to lack a certain character. And the car's dual personalities, including what happens when you press the E60 M5's M button. We talk about commonalities between both the E39 and the E60 M5. They both have a certain character that the newer ones seem to lack. And as M5s, they have a, a duality of purpose where they can and like to be driven hard, but can transform themselves into sensible sedans as practical daily needs require. 2003 M5 with 116,000 miles on it. Um, I've owned it for going on six years and it's it's been a blast and it's just given me a lot of great driving experiences. So I've done everything from the family road trips with two kids in the back and the luggage on the top to tracking it and everything in between. Classic styling gives you the power you need in any situation but it's uh, refined enough to take you to a wedding, to show up at a business meeting, uh, to do it all, you know, except off-roading. Maybe that's the only thing we can't do. <laughs> take this off-road, something's wrong with you. Now I'll be parting ways with it pretty soon, sadly enough, but I replaced it with a 2008 E63 AMG wagon, which is gonna give me a little bit more space, family, and a little bit more road trip already. Uh, it's automatic, so my wife will drive it. So I don't have to be the only one driving on vacation. Eight, nine hour drives. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a different experience. It is really interesting how different the character of these cars is. When I watch reviews of people driving this car or your car, they always say that the newer ones just don't have the character. They're not emotional. They're very fast. Right. But something is lost. And I think it's the maybe it's the turbocharging, maybe it's the way they've changed their their steering setup. Part of why the E39 is so loved is the steering on it. It's uh, that were circulating ball. This is the first generation that it was electronic. Okay. And I think the steering's great, but maybe I don't yeah. challenge it the way some people do. This is halfway between my E46 and my E60 in terms of size and performance and everything. So the E46 M3 is 333 horsepower. It makes you weak in the knees. It does. Which is all that matters. Does this car have one personality or two personalities? The M3 has one personality. Right. And it is wild. Right. It is raw. It wants right. to have a good time. Right. And it unfortunately is unyielding. It's a rough ride. Now compare it to like a modern day 911 or GT4 or whatever, I'm sure it's very yep. supple, yep. but it wants to play and it makes no bones about that. Mm -hmm. The M5 is two cars, two personalities. It's a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. Yep. So the Dr. Jekyll is, you know, it's driving you to the grocery store and taking your family about. And a Mr. Hyde is uh, when you press the M button and it goes from 400 horsepower, which is what this car has, right. to 507. And 
everything about the way the car feels changes. And that makes a difference. You want to take it on? Don't bother. Doesn't matter what you've got, doesn't matter what you've ever driven. This is quicker, it's faster, it's more astonishing. Suspension tightens up, yep. the throttle response gets better. Like this car, it has individual throttle bodies, so it's right. super responsive. Right. You know, obviously it gets a huge power bump and it just feels ready to go. And it does. It revs up to 8250 RPM, which this is 7,000, so it's just, it's more. I, I understand what you mean now, and, and yes, I would agree that it does. Well, similar to your M5, it, it has two personalities. Yeah. I mean, this has a sport mode, which doesn't really increase the horsepower, to my knowledge, but it makes the throttle more responsive. It, it stiffens the steering a little bit. That's exactly right. Um, Same thing on my M3, yeah. you press that button, yeah. and yeah, the, the, it just tightens yeah. up, and oh, it feels so much better. Yeah. But I think the subtle part of it is, like you said, this car, like one thing I realized when I got it is that it shifts better when you shift the higher RPMs. So when you're driving it, like, you know, you're not really pushing it or you're just driving it to like get groceries and you, you know, you're shifting at lower RPMs, like it feels different than when you shift it at higher RPMs, the car's like, ah. Oh, yeah, this is how I'm supposed to be driven. Yes. But you wouldn't know that until you, like, you know, just did it both ways. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, and so I think it does have that dual personality where it's like, yeah, I could do this boring grocery run and I could take you out for date night, with your wife, <laughs> you know. But that's not really what I'm here for, you know? Right. It's like, I'll do all that stuff just so I can sit in your garage. <laughs> and then you could justify owning me. You know, put your kid's car seat in the bath and, you know, drive them to a play date. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a very good point. You know? Um, is that you got to be able to justify, it's like, hey, you know, you can't just have a $40,000 play thing. Or, right. you know, maybe some people can, but yeah. I can't, and I assume you can't either, because yeah. we have young kids and mortgages. So, this video is not a comparison, but an acknowledgement of how much they share. The E39 was perfectly balanced and just right. When the car was new, everybody knew just how special this car was. Then, with the E60, as they had to, they took that formula even farther, embodying the idea that too much is just right. Taking much the same plumbing to a clean sheet V10 and pushing the boundaries of just how much power a naturally aspirated engine could reliably make. In this case, 107 horses on top of the E39's already beefy 400. <laughs> is the ultimate expression of naturally aspirated power. And then, with the F10 and evolving the approach with the F90, BMW ditched the special M racing engines and began modifying production engines with all sorts of engineering trickery, notably forced induction, adding lots and lots of horsepower and effortless speed while reducing fuel consumption, and going hog wild with that too much is just right ideal. Given the ongoing horsepower battles with AMG, Audi, and others, M engineers have delivered the intense speed, but have taken away some of the aural delight of the older engines that never lacked for power. Reviewing the comments we made about our cars drove home to me how they were both products of a time and place. 4.9 liter, 400 horsepower, V8, double vanos, so it's got the fancy valve timing. This is as high tech and as far as they could make an engine go when this was new back in 2000.
went new. They were respectively the ultimate expression of how BMW could get a four-door to perform. And I'll speak for myself here. Why do I love the older ones so much more than the newer ones? I can give you the rationale, some of which I just did, but there's no rationale for what you're emotionally drawn to, for reasons I likely will never adequately explain. I've spent a substantial chunk of my 45 years obsessed with these cars, and I learn more about them with every passing year. Please subscribe if you haven't. I've got so much more to say.